All right, let's get this straight right off the bat. The Framework 13 isn't gunning for the gaming laptop crown. It's built from the ground up to be a stellar productivity laptop. The choices they made in its design are spot on for business and day-to-day -day tasks, but they do put a bit of a damper on its gaming prowess. It's sleek, it's light, and it's got a beefy CPU under the hood, but its cooling solution is definitely on the modest side, which is great for those single-threaded bursty office tasks, but maybe not for the sustained gaming demands. And the display, while super sharp, it has unique 3x2 aspect ratio, a 60 hertz refresh rate, and a 30 millisecond pixel response time, so it might not be your first pick for fast-moving action-packed games. But here's the kicker. Framework decided to amp it up with the AMD Ryzen 5 7640U and Ryzen 7 7840U, which are pretty much the same brains inside big gaming handhelds like the Asus ROG Ally and Lenovo Legion Go. So with that added oomph from the RDNA 3 integrated GPU, how does the Framework 13 stack up in the gaming world? That's what we're diving into today, breaking down the good, the not so good, and everything in between for the Framework 13's gaming chops. Let's do this. Hey guys, CJ with Elevated Systems, and I spent the past couple of weeks gaming on my upgraded AMD Framework 13, and today I'm excited to share my experience with you. I won't get too technical here, I'll give you a rundown of the system specs, the different setups I tried, and then we'll dive straight into the gaming action. The Framework 13 I've been using packs an 8-core 16-thread AMD Ryzen 7 7840U with a 12-core GPU. It's beefed up with 32GB of DDR5-5400 memory, I've got it running a fresh Windows 11 install on a brand new 4TB Gen 4 SSD, and yes, I've up dated the graphics driver to the latest version, which I set to gaming mode. I put the laptop through its paces in various configurations. First, I gamed directly on the laptop using the built-in display and a mouse. I did, however, plug in my 100 watt power supply, and I'll refer you to my review a few weeks back for the reason behind that. Next, I tested it docked with a USB 4 dock allowing a single cable connection to a gaming keyboard, mouse, ethernet, speakers, and a 32 inch 1440p 144Hz gaming monitor. For the gameplay footage you'll see, I passed the display through an external system to ensure no extra strain on the framework. And lastly, I paired it with my Razer Chroma eGPU equipped with a Radeon RX 6750 XT. With the stage set, let's dive into the gaming experience. And let's kick things off with some casual gaming. I've talked about the Framework's display before, and one of the main drawbacks for gaming is its slow 30 millisecond response time. With the 60 hertz display, you're looking at around 16 milliseconds per frame. This means it takes almost two full frames for many of the pixels to change, leading to noticeable ghosting. However, not every game suffers from this. There's a plethora of casual games that run beautifully natively on the framework. First up, I tried out Dave the Diver. It's a nifty pixel art game, and while it consistently hits its 60 FPS cap on the ROG Ally, it had no issues doing the same on the framework. Another game in a similar vein is Brawlhalla, also consistently stayed at its 60 FPS limit. There is a bit of ghosting, but this type of game, it's not like you're going to miss a move because of a ghosted image. However, in a Twitch shooter like CS2, ghosting could be a real issue. Even though it ran at a smooth average of 146 FPS at native resolution on low settings, the pixel smearing might have you literally aiming at ghosts. The smoothed out video might not show it, but pausing reveals the extent of ghosting on the framework's display. But there's always the option of gaming on an external monitor, which we'll dive into shortly. Moving on to Team Fortress 2, the game mechanics make ghosting less of a competitive disadvantage. Even as a noob to the game, I had no trouble hitting my targets. Warframe is another title where the gameplay isn't hampered by slow pixel transitions. You can ninja flip and slash through space at a solid 70 FPS at 1080p high. Interestingly, I didn't see a significant performance boost on the Ryzen version compared to the Intel Framework 13 I previously have been playing on. 
This could be because Warframe leans more on the CPU, not fully utilizing the improved iGPU. Turn-based or RPG games also shine on the screen. I've shown in a previous video how Baldur's Gate 3 performed impressively natively on the AMD framework. By popular request, I also tested Guild Wars 2. It's my first time with the game, but it ran buttery smooth with no hiccups in the camera movements, and I had a blast taking down centaurs left and right. While this is just a snapshot of games, it represents countless titles you'll be able to run natively on the framework. But there's more. You also have the flexibility to dock the laptop and use external peripherals, whether you plug those peripherals directly into the laptop or opt for a USB 4 dock, the performance remains consistent. I put Cyberbook 2077 to the test, running its benchmark at 1080p low settings, whether on the framework's display, connected directly to an external monitor, or through my USB 4 dock, the results were consistent with an average of 44 to 45 FPS. Now let's dive into more gameplay. These are either games you guys requested or titles similar to those requests. I'll let a good chunk of the footage play out since it pretty much speaks for itself, but I'll chime in towards the end for a few titles that need a bit more commentary. The first game that warrants some commentary is Destiny 2. I realized the overlay didn't play nice with this title, but from my experience, the gameplay was buttery smooth. I'd estimate the average FPS comfortably exceeded 100, even peaking above 144 at times, as despite it not being evident in the captured footage, I did experience some screen tearing on my 144Hz monitor. 
Moving on to Baldur's Gate 3, the game looked crisp and played seamlessly on the framework display, so I decided to give the auto detect settings a whirl. Unfortunately, that led to performance dropping below 30 FPS. I then activated FSR balanced, and while the cutscenes remained visually appealing, the in-game textures took an almost stylized look. My recommendation, stick to 1080p native on medium settings. It seems FSR has a few kinks to iron out with this title on the integrated graphics. Lastly, I gave Modern Warfare a shot, but I hit a snag. I was perpetually stuck on the anti-cheat screen. Whether I launched it from Steam or even after a fresh download from the standalone Battle.net launcher, the issue persisted. I even went the extra mile uninstalling MSI Afterburner and any other anti-cheat apps on my system, but no dice. That's as far as I could get with this one. Okay guys, before we tie a bow on this one, let's dive into some eGPU performance. Given the impressive results from the integrated 780M graphics on the older or less demanding titles, I zeroed in on a couple of recent AAA games to gauge the performance boost an external GPU might offer. Kicking things off with The Last of Us, I cranked up the settings to 1440p high and managed to hover around a smooth 60fps average, however there were occasional spikes in frame times, so keep that in mind. Next up, Starfield, unlike The Last of Us, setting it to 1440p high, saw the frame rate dip below the 30fps mark. Intriguingly, even after adjusting the display resolution to 1080p and giving the game a fresh start, the FPS improvement was minimal. But there is a silver lining, the eGPU provided a commendable 43% performance boost in Starfield compared to the 1080p low performance on the integrated graphics. I limited my eGPU test to just these titles because, let's be real, results were varied based on the external GPU you're using. The burning question most of you had was, does it work? The answer, yes, a Thunderbolt eGPU functions via USB 4 on the AMD framework, but how effectively? Well, that's up for debate. There's a noticeable performance dip on the GPU. I opted for this 6750X, a card I'm well acquainted with from my gaming rig, where it's usually paired with a Ryzen 5 7600X and 32 gigabytes of DDR4 5600 MTS RAM. On my desktop, Starfield at 1440p high in New Atlantis maintains a steady 60 FPS, while The Last of Us at 1440p averages 70 to 80 FPS on a mix a high in ultra settings. In essence, when you factor in the bandwidth and CPU power constraints, expect roughly a 50% drop in GPU performance for demanding games via USB 4. This does mirror the performance hit I observed on the Intel framework with the Thunderbolt eGPU in my previous tests. Now, diving into the Framework 13's AMD laptop's gaming performance, there were a few hiccups. Beyond the FSR glitch in Baldur's Gate 3 and the anti-cheat system hiccup, I encountered other challenges. Firstly, while ray tracing is available on the Phoenix processors, it's not quite game ready. In Cyberpunk, with only ray traced lighting at its lowest, the performance took nearly a 50% hit. So while ray tracing might have potential for 3D rendering, which I'll touch on in a future video, as I'm sure everyone had assumed, it's not quite there for gaming. Another issue surfaced when the framework went to sleep while docked. Waking it up was a mess. It couldn't figure out the right display configuration. The only fix was a hard shutdown and rebooting it undocked. I've been using this same dock for a while with different setups, including the Intel frameworks and my MacBook Pro without this issue. This makes me lean towards AMD drivers as the culprit. In just one week, the graphics driver gave out on me twice, necessitating a full clean reinstall. The driver from the framework package seems stable in my initial tests, but it doesn't work with newer games. The latest gaming driver, which supports the integrated 780M GPU, has been a bit shaky, causing a few black screen crashes and the two full out failures. I'm sure these kinks will be ironed out in future updates as usual, but the ongoing saga with AMD drivers is honestly getting a bit frustrating. 
Finally, there's the considerable fact that while gaming, regardless of the title, the laptop's fans were running at full throttle the entire time, attempting to keep the system cool. The laptop itself heated up to well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. While fast and loud fans are pretty standard for a gaming laptop, these ultra portables really weren't designed for continuous heavy workloads like gaming. So after putting the Framework 13 AMD laptop through its paces, Here's the lowdown. The AMD Phoenix series APUs have certainly given the framework's gaming ability a nice boost, making it a reliable companion for casual gaming sessions. You'll get a smooth experience with less demanding titles and even some surprisingly decent performance on the newer games, albeit with a few tweaks and compromises. But let's not stray from the essence of this machine. It's crafted with productivity in mind. It's an ultra portable laptop that excels in handling business and productivity tasks with ease. So if you're looking for a solid workhorse that can indulge in some gaming on the side, the Framework 13 with its AMD is definitely the way to go over its Intel counterparts.